couple of years ago, I ha- did a show there randomly. Who knows why? What, at the Wax Museum? Madame, Madame Tussauds on the roof. Wow, yeah. wow. But there was a Betty White figure there. Betty what? Betty White. Racist. Uh, you sure you don't want to change your answer to there was a statue of Jack Black there? <laughs> I think he was in there too. If Jack Black and Betty White got it on, what color would the kids be? I don't know, but I don't think it has to be so black and white. Excellent answer. You're riding down the Harland Highway. All right, hold tight on the Harland Highway show. Harland Williams. What do you think? Can you hear yourself? Yeah, All right. hear myself. Look good, feel good, men's warehouse. Oh, really? Do you shop there? I don't know. Isn't that the slogan? When you look good, you feel good? Is you're, that no, their slogan? No, they're, they're, you're going to like the way you look. Men's Sh- warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. Should that really be the slogan for a, a warehouse that sells human beings? <laughs> yeah, for a warehouse of men. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty inclusive, too. Why know? don't they just say men's whorehouse? It's, it's Not, almost the same as warehouse. That's Hooters right there. They should do oh, a collab. Oh, God. Have you been to Hooters? That T-shirt looks like you just got off a shift there. <laughs> well, I got the orange shorts. Oh, do you? Yeah, I'm not going to stand up, but I'm wearing the orange what shorts. What side do you look better, front or back? Back. I've, nice. I've got ass. You got ass? Baby's got back. Good for you, man. Yeah. I've been trying to get ass. It's Are you serious? Low inventory. Yeah, what's Yeah, it's I'm pretty flat back there. How do you what do you do to pump the beef? Nothing. But that's the problem. I think about Dude. it a lot. I I manifest that I pray in a mirror. Like, Give me some cheeks. Dude, are you serious? This breaks my heart. I have I have got, I've got two things I'm going to offer you. And this <laughs> isn't part of the podcast. I've got a Suzanne Summers uh, bun blaster mm. and a James. Used or unused? Uh, it's used. Okay, okay. But it's been boiled. All right. So it's, uh, it's sanitary. Sanitary, great. And I've got a, uh, a Jane Fonda uh, uh, thigh master oh, beautiful. Uh, kit. So awesome. if, you, if, you, if you're really serious about getting back. Yeah, I, I would love to. I'm tired of pants falling down my, my, my waist. Yeah. They're just slipping up. You know? we, well, you know what I find what's great with having back, like I've got great back, baby's got back. Baby's got back. And uh, what I find is like if I go into a Starbucks, are you a Starbucks guy? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like if I go into a Starbucks or even the grocery store, mm-hmm. I like a good deal. Yeah. I like bonus stuff. Mm-hmm. And I find that if I want an extra latte grande or a f- double frap, vanilla, flip flap, wonder wap, wiggle wop, dingle blunk. Yeah. Grande, yeah. If I turn around and twerk, like for t- even 20 seconds, 35 uh-huh. seconds, I'm getting a freebie. Oh, really? Because baby they got think, back. Oh, I thought that was because I thought you were having a seizure. But but either way, what have you got to do to get that free frappe? You know, in a way, it's funny you said seizure, which is a funny word on its own. Yeah. But when the way I twerk, it does look like my, my beef's having a seizure. Yeah. It's kind of just we're going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, and the other day, the other day I was at Starbucks and I was just uh, putting on a Jello party, mm-hmm. and someone yelled "seizure, seizure," and I yelled "seizure." I barely <laughs> knows her, and then you got two free drinks, <laughs> and then a guy brought out a Caesar salad. And you're like, no, 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 wow. no wrong, 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 wrong. Did you say seizure salad? Yeah. Wow. That, then now they're they're totally wow. off. Yeah, missed those, the mark here. You know what's dangerous about a Caesar salad? Hmm. The croutons fly anywhere, and you could hit someone. Like they just when that salad starts. Shaking, ping you right in the head, bing, dude. Have you ever had a seizure for real? No, but I used to have asthma attacks as a kid. What's that? I think look I just like? wanted to Talk vape to or me. something. Yeah, I don't know because I I would hit I, I I couldn't breathe out of nowhere. I'd be breathless, and I oh, I can't do it. And then, and then they'd grow, my mom would give me the inhaler, and then I'd just get a quick hit of that oxygen. You hold it in, blow a couple of O's, and you're good to go. What? Yeah. So just all of a sudden, for no reason, no oxygen reason. disappeared. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know. You know when your computer just restarts or your iPhone yeah. just restarts randomly? That's what my body was doing. It would just be like, and off. And I'm like, what? What? Yeah. Was it a situation where your lungs stopped functioning? Like, not like they pump like a heart, but they probably suck like a vacuum. Maybe. Yeah. It felt like nothing was going in or nothing goes out right at like the, the throat. That's where it like stopped the cutoff. Like the, the dam, the, the wall popped up. So it wasn't like a scenario where you were just walking along no, I was, I, and I all of a sudden there was a, a zone with no oxygen. Your body was responsible, not the environment. No, I was upstairs in the hallway and I just remember, uh, couldn't breathe. 
You were upstairs in the hallway. Yeah, could could be a zone of no oxygen upstairs, a lack of oxygen. Upstairs in hallways, there's often little vortexes where vortexes. there's little pockets of no oxygen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so wow. I, I started making a bunch of vowel sounds. Oh, and then my wow. mom came to the rescue, and she had the <laughs> inhaler. But I only had child asthma. I don't, I don't have adult asthma. You were child asthma, but yet it sounds like you, you turned into a senior, like... Uh, Substitute teacher, grammar teacher, because you're A E I O U. Oh, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you were saying to me? Kind of. I think yeah, you were. I, I learned my vowels through asthma. What is a vowel? And be honest. I think it's like the may- mayonnaise of a sandwich. It holds it all together. Does that make sense? Okay. With it, because a sandwich without any condiments on it, just lettuce, it's slipping and sliding. Like I think avocado. I don't think it belongs on a sandwich. Well, let me ask it's you just this: slipping around. Are you a puzzle solver guy? No. Let me throw one by you. Please. Let's say you're on, what's that Wheel of Fortune thing? Yep. Where Vanna White comes out and turns and you ask for the vowels. Mm -hmm. Let's say you broke into that studio. You, Trevor Wallace, by the way. Oh, hey, Trevor Wallace. We're going to do a proper intro right after the vowel bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, But you break into Wheel of Fortune. Mm -hmm. Okay, nobody's there. The security guard's asleep. You go to the letter board. Mm Mm-hmm. You take all the vowels off the letter board, you move them out into the parking lot, Mm -hmm. and you tell me, because I'm not good at this, is that considered a vowel movement? Uh, Yeah, that's a vowel movement. Which, which, which Vanna, you know, at that age is having trouble with the vowel movement. So the vowel movement is an easier A to B. Whoa. You picking up what I'm putting down? I think I don't know if if that made sense. I don't even know if he's still alive. I hope he is. Who? Van? Van who? What? Uh, Vanna White? Yeah. Wait, you said Van. You're, you're uh, on well, a first name basis with him. You're on a nickname basis with Vanna White? Yeah. yeah. He prefers Van in his spare time. Wait, it's a woman, though. Why are you saying he? Well, that's what you think. <laughs> We're on a, a first name and first gender basis. I, I, don't, I know the name, but I, I don't. I, I'm 30. I don't know a lot of things, okay? Vanna White is a woman. Yes, yes she is. <laughs> Vanna White, this is me <laughs> realizing that it's not a uh, man. Wow, bro. We better hit the theme music and just someone's having a brain seizure over here. Oh, yeah, dude, because there's a lack of oxygen oh. in your house. Well, there you is. There is, folks. <laughs> Trevor Wallace is here on the Holla Highway podcast. Uh, comedian. Yep. Um, voiceover guy. Y- yeah, I've done some of those. Um, actor. Uh-huh. Writer. Yep. Um, what else? Tell me. Uh, not an organ donor. Oh, really? I, I, I don't know. I should be. I could be. I'm not, though. Why won't you, though? That's a, that's an interesting topic. I don't, I don't, it's sort of morbid, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't remember seeing that on the DMV application. I also failed my written test like six times. I was like, I don't think you, you did. Yeah. So Dri- do you drive? I do drive. So I yeah. failed the driver's test twice, but the written test, the permit test, I failed like six times. Wow. But they, they're dumb questions. Like if it, what? If it's yellow, you know, what do you say? Let it mellow. You go, you just, you pee. That, yeah. I, I didn't get a uh, lot yeah, of the, yeah. it, there was too many specificities. How, how many feet are you supposed to stop behind a car? Yeah, what is it? I think it's like 30, something stupid. 30 I don't know. feet I, behind a car? You're asking the wrong yeah. guy. I failed. Yeah, you failed six or, times. Or how soon you're supposed to blinker before Yeah. the light? Well, I always say blinker. I Hardly. barely know her. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? That's what I should have said. That's why I failed so many times. Would you, I just don't know if I feel comfortable like someone else getting my organs. I, I mean, don't know if they'd want that. I, I think they should have to watch like a vlog of me for a, a week and be like, yeah. I don't know if I want his. They should have to audition them. Yeah. Like put a GoPro on my, my mouth and see what I eat that week. Oh, God. I don't think they'd want that. Would you, would you, are you a drinker? Not really. So your kidney's okay. Kidney's good. Um, your lungs sound a little iffy. As a child, they were iffy. They, like you wouldn't want to get your lungs and be no, in an upper hallway. Not at all. Let's say. Let's hope you don't have a, like a desk job on like the 30th floor. Yeah. Collapsing. Yeah. You don't, you got, do you have to mark that on your organ donor card that my lungs are a little iffy? I don't know. What, is an organ in anything inside your body? Yeah. They well, can take anything? Well, your, your, your biggest organ, you know what your biggest organ is, right? The heart. No. Penis. Well, maybe you. Mm. Yeah, it's my heart. No. What is it? 
And it's not even in your body. Skin? Yeah. Yeah. It's your biggest organ, bro. Is it? Yeah. That makes sense. And it's not even in your body. So you're going to give yeah. You're going to give your skin to someone in a in a Prius crash? You want someone who can't control a Prius <laughs> wearing your skin, bro? That's true. That's stolen valor. They're robbing a bank as Harlan Williams. Right? You go you yeah. go do some nefarious deeds, you leave your your DNA all over the Motel oh, 6 shit. room. Hey, they we dig- thought Trevor Wallace was dead. They dig How you did up, these yeah. four humans get eaten in the bathroom? We thought he was dead. And then they just do this. It's like the perfect murder. Yeah. Now you thought you were getting buried in the cemetery. No, you're getting buried in the penitentiary. <sighs> getting buried in that penitentiary. Awesome. Which, and that's why you have the t-shirt. Because you just got out of jail. I did some hard time. Did you? Yeah. You ever kill anyone? No. You will. <laughs> have you? Bro. Oh, shit. I thought that was for parking tickets. No, I was over at Starbucks the other day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I like I like a bonus. I like a freebie. Uh-huh. And uh, I guess someone was new on the job. Oh. And I turned around and baby got back and I started twerking. Like I did about a 45-minute twerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this AWOL didn't give me a freebie. Took him out. Got one. It's Christmas time, so I got one of the gingerbread men and threw it like a karate star. Into the neck. Right in the fucking carteroid arteroid or whatever wow. that is. That's cool. Thanks. Did you keep the gingerbread after? I sure did. It's like dipping. Yeah. You know, you well, it's a, a treat. It's a treat. You get a little, uh, an O uh, type O positive yeah. blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get to look at another employee and say, you're next. And guess and what came hold over it. the counter? Your freebie. F- your freebie frappe. Fra- frappuccino. And what's that right there? This is a Carney's. Okay. Oh, they got a good burger. Carney's. Uh, I, I went for a uh, Carney's uh, chili cheese dog. Free? Mm-hmm. You got it? You twerk for him? I twerked for it. Nice. Fucking right, bro. And they go cash, Venmo, credit card, twerk. What's it going to be? They said that, well, with me, they know me there. So okay. they, they said uh, cash, Venmo, or yeah. shake the little moneymaker. Shake the little moneymaker. And I turned Harder around. With the hips, yeah. Dude, I twerked. I, some of the p- pictures fell off the wall. Really? I was swinging my roast beef around like oh. a glazed ham at a Chinese <laughs> opera. Yeah, that checks out. Dude, did you go to the opera? You look like you might. No, I hate the opera. Have you ever been to Oprah's house? Mm-mm. Well, close a couple of vowels there. Wow. A couple, you know, so have you been to her house? I haven't, but I do like to go to the opera. Do you? How do you, no. when do you applaud? When do you know that they're, you're, they're doing well? Here's what's weird. And you might think this is not a classy thing, but uh-huh. when I turn around and applaud, I twerk. Like I slap the ass, to, the beef together. Yeah. So my ass does the clapping because oh. I'm, I'm a twerker. And you're doing it when everyone else is clapping or whenever you're willing to I'll do it whenever to. I'm moved, emotionally moved. And I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm up in the, on the box, the opera box, you yeah. know, the, the big, and I just get up there and hang it over the railing and slap it around like two Christmas glazed hams and my thongs like squeaking. And you do it like after the house announcements, like warning, everybody <laughs> at the Ace Theater in downtown, please silence your cell phones. And you share <laughs> You just hear this, the beef slap. That's great. And what's really weird, normally you think it's just the performers on stage that mm-hmm. get that get the applause, and people will, will literally turn around down below, and they're just applauding me up in the thing. That's so cool. Yeah. So the performers think it's for them, but it's just for you? I get a little something. So you're, by default, an opera singer. Well, twerker. Opera okay, twerker. Opera twerker. I went to the opera with Oprah. And we saw Phantom of the Oprah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're going to laugh, maybe I won't finish the story. <laughs> well, I just heard another laugh. That Come sounds like on. what Satan. actors would say to warm up before a scene. Yo. I went to the opera with Oprah to see the Phantom of the Oprah. Right. Say that ten times fast. I went to the opera to see... F- I went to the opera Opera with Oprah to see the Phantom of the Opera. I went to the opera with Oprah to see the Phantom of the Opera. I went to the opera with Oprah to see the Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. That's not 10, but it's three. Yeah, three times three is nine. Close enough. We'll round up. Who am I, the Count from Sesame Street? Fuck me tender in the night with a giant Could stock be. of rhubarb from your sister's garden, bro. He, he had, he had, uh, <laughs> I mean, he, seriously. He had, he had sideburns, right? Who? Count, Oprah? Count, no, uh, yes. Oh, who? Count, 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 count,
<laughs> dude, I'll take it. That's not bad. If you're throwing a comp my way, dude, I'll take it. Can I give you a compliment? Give me a comp. I'll take any comp. One of my favorite movie is Dumb and Dumber. Are you serious? Yeah. So dude. you're seen as the <gasps> cop. Right? That is... So, it's incredible. You like that scene? That's incredible. I mean, you're sitting behind the the highway you filmed that on, yeah? Right. We we filmed that in Colorado. In uh, Colorado, yeah, it looks somewhere. Was it just for that shot out there? Just for that scene, really? Yeah. And it was my first movie, dude. You crushed it. Oh, thank you. I was terrified but excited as hell at the same time. Yeah, I want to like quote it, but I can't quote it to you. You said it. Yeah. If you quote it, you're in deep trouble. Would I get hit with a lawsuit? You might get hit with a lobster. Which sounds a lot. Well, if you're gonna laugh, maybe so, this is sorry. A I just I have, a, I have a shellfish allergy. That's very shellfish of you. Yeah, but um, it was, uh, dude. It was um, we were on this road in the middle of nowhere, and there was a bunch of pine trees. And I remember looking. And have you ever seen an owl like puke up a mouse? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like owls, they'll they'll eat a whole mouse and they spit out the and then they shit out anything that's juicy, but all the fur and the bones yeah. they, they they regurgitate it and they make a pellet. It's pretty fun. It's like and a recycling so, center. Yeah, it's like owls are like re mouse recyclers, and yes. then you have this this pellet. And it's like a ball yeah. of fur, but you can actually see the skull. If yes. you pull the fur, bar, the skull and the bones and the fibia and the femur and all these things are in there. Mm -hmm. And I remember just, I guess, out of nervousness, the Fairley brothers were there. And I, I saw these owls and I go, hey, guys, you ever? And I started breaking them apart and showing them all these owl bones. And they're just like, okay. How was their reaction to that? I just remember, I think they were a bit mystified. Yeah. But I didn't know what else to do with myself. It was my first movie. I was a little scared. We're yeah. on a country road. I'm with the Fairley brothers and Jim Carrey. Sounds like it could be a murder. You're Easily. Like, yeah. Yeah, you're like, I got to make my, my mark here. I got to be the funny owl guy. Oh, God. But but that scene is is, is great. Dude, thank you. It's, it's it's so good. Well, you know what? It uh, I'll, be, I'm, I'll be honest. It amazed me how it resonated. It, it, yeah. it, it lasted way longer than it. Really? Than it you know, it got, it got so much mileage. I, I just thought it would be kind of come and go. It would be forgotten. It was a quick little scene. Oh, interesting. But, uh, yeah. Oh, I want to, um, do you like quote? I'm, I'm a history guy. Okay. Do you like history? Uh, I'm a part of it, so I guess so. Do you like quotes? Like, do you like yeah. famous quotes? Yeah, and then you guess who it's from. Do you want to try one? Please. And I have a few of these throughout the show. Cool. Um, here's the first one. Yep. If cryptocurrency and AI take over our lives today, the children of tomorrow will be dying, flesh-inhabiting cocoons generated by our social blindness and fueled by our overly ambitious nightmares. John Stamos. Oh, you're so close. Dude, you got the two initials. Oh, really? Jermaine Stewart. Wow. You know Jermaine Stewart? Yeah. You do? No. You don't know Jermaine? I don't. Can I give you a hint? Guy or girl? It's a guy. Okay, cool. So we got that part. We're, we're past the Vanna White thing. You want a hint? Yeah. We don't have to take our clothes off clothes to off. have a good time. That's Jermaine uh, Stewart. Uh, we can dance and party all night, all night, and drink some cherry wine. That's Jermaine Stewart. That's Jermaine Stewart. Yeah. That is Jermaine Stewart. Yeah, but you said John Stamos, which fascinates me that you got the J and the S. Something was telling me to go JS. Wow. There's more to your asthma than I think you're letting on. Yeah, I, I think it only traps some of my oxygen, so I can still think at some points. Um, what's a phrase or what's a phrase or a cool saying that doesn't get used enough? Do you think? Ooh, yeah. I'm going to go with, um, or even if you had to make one up. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Well, kiss my ass and call me Wiley Coyote. Wow. Tell me where that comes from. Wow. I yeah, like because it, Wiley way. Coyote was always in the run. So, you know, kiss yeah. my ass and call me why they cut, because I'm on the run. Kiss my ass first, and then I'm running. Kiss my ass, I'm out of here. Because you're looking at my ass as I run away. And ass, big theme on today's episode. Dude, can you try it on me just so I can see yeah, how yeah, it feels? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go, so, go so, so, so we're at the improv, Yeah, right? And you come up to me, and I go, Hey, bro, how are you? Oh, good, man. Good, good, good. Thanks for having me on your podcast the other day. That was awesome. Yeah, I saw your uh, set the other night. I didn't really think it was that good. 
What do you mean by that? I just, you know. But why? Why would you say that? I just kind of sat there. Okay. Well, you know what else sat there? My new special pterodactyl on Amazon Prime. So you can kiss my ass and call me Wiley Coyote. Me me. I just I set you up just so I it could did, do the thing. But, but that's what it's for. Because yeah. if there was a crowd watching, they would all go me me. You yeah. Know? It would be it would be like an Andrew Dice Clay bit where yeah. everybody yells me me at the end. <sighs> what what do you think? It would. I like it. I like kiss my ass and call, call me, me Wiley, Wiley Coyote. Coyote. It's pretty good. I might Fuck, I dude. might sell those on T-shirts in Venice. You know? Dude, you should. What would be yours? Or do you have one that should be used more? Yeah, I think um, get on your knees and sniff my Christmas crumble cake is one I've been tossing around lately. Yeah, and what's the scenario you'd use that for? It's basically old people love crumb. <laughs> well, if you're going to laugh, maybe this is. <laughs> Sorry, I just remember the, uh, your set the other night. Oh, the shit one where I just dropped a double deuce. I think it might have been three. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. So, so so I've got this thing with old people. We don't get along. Really? And for, for some reason, I just don't do well with the dusties. Do they the get dusties. along with anybody? The dusties. Yeah, I call them the dusties. To their face? I'll call them to their, to their face if they had a face. To me, they're just melted uh, Hollywood Wax Museum figures. They are. By the way, I went into the Hollywood Wax Museum the other day with a Bic lighter. <laughs> I, melt, I melted Elton John and Olivia Newton-John and Pope John. And I got Olivia Pope... Elton, Olivia Newton, John the Third. You also got arrested for arson. I saw that. That's a, that was about the TMZ article. Yes. Wow. Yeah, the, they look very realistic. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Though. I know they're so stupid. Like, why would you go there? Like, let's go see a statue of there's like the Rock. Like, just like okay, right? There's twenty five dollars to see someone just standing there. You know, people are, people are dumb. A couple of years ago, I. Did a show there randomly. Who knows why? What at the wax museum? Madame Madame Tussauds on the roof. Yeah. No. Yeah, you got paid in candle wax. Pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But there was a Betty White figure there. What was, was she? Figure. Betty what? Betty White. Racist. Uh, uh, Betty. Betty. You sure you don't want to change your answer to there was a statue of Jack Black there? <laughs> I think he was in there too. If Jack Black and Betty White got it on, what color would the kids be? I don't know, but I don't think it has to be so black and white. Excellent answer. Now get on your knees and suck my Christmas crumble cake. Yeah. See, that's how you can use it. You yeah, that's just good. Drop it. But do you I, like old people? Nah, not particularly. I didn't think so. I don't. I I think old guys know. Old women, they're oh. not bad. They they yeah. smile and wave a little bit. Have you ever made love to an old woman? Like anyone over eighty? Can't say I have. Dude, but there's still time. Dude, if you're not doing anything tonight, can I recommend the uh, the uh, Twilight Inn Senior Center down on La Brea? That's a good one. Dude, the chicks down there are so hopping. And what's great about an oldie is, like, you've done one-night stands. I've done those, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And they feel kind of empty. The girl gets up in the morning. You get up in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's over. Quick Some, small talk. Right. Or sometimes yeah. you leave before the sun even creeps into the sky, into mm -hmm. the Glendale sky. Yeah. An oldie, you wake up, your eyes flutter open. Mm-hmm. The, the, the soothing scent of mothballs in the air. It's almost like a calming, like a gas. Yeah, you can hear porridge in the background. You hear porridge stirring, just a... Yeah. And then yeah. uh, like an oval teen and ginger snaps on the night table. Yeah. And dude, there's just something so... Ginger snaps are great for your health, so I'm in. Right? Yeah. Because, you know, women nowadays, it's the Instagram women. It's mm -hmm. the, what are you giving me? It's the gold digger generation. But yeah. when you go with an oldie... And you wake up and someone's rubbing like Vaseline on your chest and reading yeah. you a Curious George story. Yeah. C forget about it. That sounds kind of nice. Try it, bro. What's your opening pickup line to them at the Twilight Inn on La Brea? I don't really say anything. I kind of pull out a diaper and swing it. Like it depends. I'm just like, anyone want to party? Gotcha. And these fuckers light up like hyenas on a baby gazelle that just fell out of a fucking... A hole in yeah, Africa, yeah, seven forty-seven. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? That's, and then you have to fight for one 
elderly lady or they kind of like all come to you they're pretty competitive is it fast or like a slow it's a slow ride yeah a lot of walkers yeah not walking but oh know. dude walkers are great because they hold on and it's just like i don't want to get too, i don't want to ruin the experience for okay, you but cool. dude if you get a chance yeah oh yeah that's right up my alley elderly lady she's got homemade maple syrup you like syrup bro i do talk I- to me I just think it's a great thing to add. I went to a restaurant here recently in Los Angeles, some bullshit. They go, we don't do syrup. Fuck me tender in the night. What happened? They got fentanyl in it. Wait, what? I don't know. They they, they don't do maple. Blue Jam Cafe, it's it's a a really good place. Oh, it's on Melrose. Yeah, they're great. I've been there. But they don't do syrup. Then they ain't so good to me. Yeah. I don't know why. They have a sign out front. We don't do syrup. I think it's one of those those weird, like... um, Ego thing. Does it get any more pretentious? I hate it. We don't do syrup. And let me ask you this. They have a breakfast menu. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a brunch spot. And they don't do syrup. That's syrup like thing. saying, come on in for breakfast. Oh, we don't do eggs. Yeah. Dumb. I don't know why you're going there still, I got to stop giving them my money. They have these good little cube potatoes. Real good. Cube? Cube. Yeah. Picture like a... Huh? Yeah. Just, just like the foot of a Lego. Like that size. And then they, there's just like a whole batch of them. They just serve them on the side of the hash browns, but there's no syrup. Wait, you put syrup on hash browns? Good. I don't mind if it spills into the side of it. Wow. You know, I go hash browns and eggs, maybe a little hot sauce and some cheese. But if there's, if there's a little bit of syrup leaning over, I'm not. I'm not going to discriminate. I'll let. I'll let it. You know what's a fun trick, and you're going to look. Because now that I know you're a syrup nut, mm-hmm. um, before Dahmer was put away, I, oh. I, I was buddies with him as a kid. Like he was, I lived in on his street. Like, you were a kid? When I was young, Dahmer was our neighbor. How old was he? Oh, this guy was, I was 16 and he was 14. Oh. And we so used to play together. In what way? Just, you know, well, kid stuff. Okay. But sometimes we'd do the sleepovers mm. and we'd do the, you know, the mother would wake up and do the breakfast and you're going to love that you can do this because you love syrup. Mrs. Dahmer, Carol. She'd put down a stack of fucking hot flapjacks. Great. Fucking, he'd have like three. I'd have three. You're going to love this. It's so, it just adds another layer to, to the whole syrup thing. Mm-hmm. She would put down the bottle of Mrs. Butterworth, right? Ooh. Now, describe that bottle. It's the only bottle on the market and for sure the only bottle in the syrup market that is shaped like a human being. Yes. So here's Jeffrey. Instead of tipping Mrs. Butterworth over and pouring her brown liquid blood out of the top of her cranium, Dahmer grabs a steak knife out of the knife caddy. Yeah. (laughs) Bottom? Slices her Achilles. Wow. How did he reseal it? He didn't. Just fucking douched it. it, And and I should have gone, wait. Is this guy like going to be trouble in the future? Yeah, and Who was does he? That was he trouble in the he, future? When he hit about twenty five, he started eating his neighbors, eating people. Syrup or no syrup? I don't know. Yeah. But th- I think this was an indicator. But what I'm saying to you as a syrup nut, try it. It puts a new splash on. Go get some Butterworth. She, she's still out ah. there. She's the only human bottle. Still, didn't they, wasn't there an actual thing about that where they stopped doing that or they changed the name? Mrs. Butterworth. I don't know, didn't they? Or maybe that was Aunt Jemima. I forget which. They one. got rid of Aunt Jemima. Damn. Yeah, because you know you got to get rid of a successful, iconic black woman who's had a business for over a hundred years and has ingratiated her way into everybody's hearts, mm-hmm. and every human, white, black, Asian, associates her with comfort, goodwill, sure and do. cheer. But yeah. let's eliminate it because. There's so many iconic black figureheads like that. Wrong. There's only one in the whole grocery store, and they erased her. Yeah. Smart move. Idiots. But they didn't get rid of Butterworth. I forgot. Butter, I was confusing the, the, the two bottles. But, so I guess maybe I'm not a syrup guy like I thought I was. Well, this is why I brought it up. You know, and that, that's the country we're in right now. So yeah. What, what, are country. you a Buttersworth or are you an Aunt Jemima person? Well, Jemima never got her own bottle. And think Did about it. Well, oh, think her about own body as the bottle. Her own body as the Her persona yes. was never made. Like, who gets their, even Oscar. You, you ever receive an Oscar? It's solid. Yeah. You can't put syrup in an Oscar. No. But Butterworth. 
I mean, if you're a real junkie, which it sounds like you are, you could just take your little hat off and just go behind yeah. an alley in Denny's and just power juice it. Yeah, wow. Bro. Did, did Buttersworth do that to Aunt Jemima to, like, sabotage? Wait, do you think it was a comp- competition thing? Whoa, talk you know? to me, guy. You know, it's like, it's. have you heard the story about McDonald's and those two founders and, like, one guy, like, screwed the other guy, and now he's... If you see, there's a documentary on it. I don't know. I was high one night and I watched it. But it, wait, they had gay sex. What do you mean they screwed they each had other? A, a McGang bang, yeah. A happy rear. I, th- yes. <sighs> right in the grimace. They there was yeah two guys that started it and I, I don't know what happened in the beginning. I don't remember much of the documentary, but one guy essentially left the company and took all the ideas and started McDonald's from... Oh, right. Was that Ray Kroc or whatever his name was? I forget. I was off the edibles watching this. You were like high as a kite? I was up there. So let me get this clear. It's Saturday night. Daddy comes home. Mm -hmm. Daddy wants to party. Daddy gets high as a kite. Daddy pops five, six gummies, smokes a bong, power reefs and jacks, whatever you do. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're up there. You're like in tweaker heaven, and you slap on a McDonald's documentary? Bro, yeah. someone might have a drug problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting serious. Have you seen the Burger King documentary? Uh-uh. Holy fuck. What happens? That king with the crown, he gets bent over uh, a deep fryer and just fucking power rammed. Loses half his stuff to the queen. Divorce. <laughs> Sad documentary. Sweet God. He had a Dairy Queen tramp stamp on his lower back. He hasn't been the same since. Christ on a Christmas tree. What was it? Crumble on my nuts? Crumble. No, no thanks. I'm busy. <laughs> um, we got any other quotes? Oh, yeah. We, wow, you are. You're, you're turning into a history nut. Yeah, I, this is exciting. This okay, is, here's our next quote. Ready? Please. This is the next quote. Ready? Um, Bro... I just seen Fancy G up at the Shell station, bro. He been tripping because he got Slim Jims falling all out his tough skins. And he got cups, fam. Peanut butter cups for reals. Bro be tripping for real, fam. That either is me or Tom Hanks' son, Chet Hanks. No, it's a girl. Really? Yeah. Was that who I met? No, she's an actress. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Amy Schumer. No, think Sex in the City. Bobby Lee. Do you want me to read it again? Yes, please. Bro, I just seen Fancy G up at the Shell Station, bro. He been tripping, cuz. He got Slim Jims falling all out his tough skins. And he got cups, fam. Peanut butter cups for reals. Bro be tripping for real, fam. That's right under your nose, Sex in the City. Hillary Clinton? No. She's got three names. Sarah Jessica Parker. Bro. Is that? Yeah, that's her. Wow. I think she was at one of those women's rallies or something, or she oh. gave a moving speech. Is yeah. that her Oscar speech? It could have been. Did she win an Oscar? I don't know. Bro, I She's just told something. Maybe it's Jemima. Fancy G up at the Shell Station. I got the cups for reals, fam. Yeah. Just powerful. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. It's moving. You almost had it, except it was a guy and it was the wrong gender. But you're all around it, I think. Uh Sarah Jessica Parker, the the three name thing really got me. Would you date a girl with three names? Like, isn't that a lot of work when you're making love? Like, normally you just want to go, oh, "Oh, Sally, or oh, Karen. But when you got to let three out, like, oh, Sarah, (sighs) Jessica, (gasps) Parker, fuck, I'm done. I wouldn't mind it because you say it fast, it almost sounds Spanish. Then she's like, oh, my God, this guy knows foreign language. Like, oh, Sarah Jessica Parker. How does it go? Sarah Jessica Parker. One more? Sarah Jessica Parker. Easy it bro. almost sounds like you've been on Duolingo. So it's yeah, it's kind of a romantic thing. It's like, did he learn a new language for me? What if you put a bit of a Latin spin on it? Like, Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah, now it just sounds like you're in a bush with binoculars looking for her. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right, there really isn't. There it. isn't. It's the you 90s, know. go. Bro up. Yeah, it's the 90s. <laughs> I said, go, bro up. I put the letters back. Bro up. I said go, bro. I was going to say bro, grow up, and I said go, bro up. 
But both. But, you know, and that leads up. me to my next question. Um, do you have your own phrase? Do you have like a phrase you do, like your own, like, like do you have a little? Oh, of course. Like, <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I have multiple. What you, What's the <laughs> setting I'm in where I'd say it? Like, what's it? You're just chilling with the boys. You're yeah. out at the club, mm-hmm. power slamming, grinding, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, it's. I mean, that, that phrase is pretty, it's a good one. I mean, it comes to me, like, right off the top of my tongue. What is it? I don't know if you've heard it. What? It's kind of vulgar. Go for just it. Just cowabunga, dude. bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it works really for anything. Wait, you know, whether you're going into a Leslie's Pool Supply, a Bar Mitzvah, P.F. Chang's. You can really yell it whenever. Because cowabunga is fun. It's friendly. It's wait, nostalgic. Wait, wait. Didn't I already ask you this question? If you, you had your own phrase. did. But you worded it differently. What did I say? You're like, do you, do you have a quote that we should bring back? <laughs> okay, okay, good. And, and that one was, kiss my ass, Wiley Coyote. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I'm sitting here thinking, did I already ask I should ask have denied you? it and just been like, you, you're losing it, man. Your memory is slipping like by the I, day. I feel like I've been, I've been with too many oldies, dude. Dude, you might be a dusty. <laughs> you might be hanging out at La Brea too much. You might be at the Twilight <laughs> Inn one too many nights. Oh, shit. Twilight, that's a, not tonight. That's a real place, the Twilight, Twilight Inn. Inn. It was, it, it's not on La Brea, but when I lived in Canada, there was a, we, lived, oh. we had a cottage in a little town. And in the middle of nowhere, it was like this little town, probably 400 people lived there, maybe yeah, like less. 500, yeah. And on the edge of town, there was a senior's home. It was called the Twilight Inn. And any time we went into town to get groceries, we had to pass it. And what was it? It was just a, for old people, oh. like old country folk. But, but the name, because it always reminded me of the Twilight Zone, right? Mm. It was called the Twilight Inn. And all these years that I've been alive, I've always thought something nefarious or mysterious was going never on there. was well there definitely was i don't old, know old people homes are very sexually active because they, well, they, yeah. don't, they don't really care yeah they what just am i go gonna get chlamydia it. as long as i get my play time at 3 p.m what, what have you ever like forecast when your last day might be that you ever have sex like have you put an age oh, wow. or a date on? can you imagine yeah. if you knew you know people say if you knew the day you were gonna die would you what would you do yeah if you knew the day you were going to have your last, what would you do? It'd be somewhere tropic, that's for sure. It would? It'd be on a balcony somewhere with a robe somewhere <laughs> in the near distance. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I'm going out, I want to go out like Ric Flair. Right, I wanna, right. I want to yell, woo, as that's wow. the last one going out. Wow. And I, I'm going to film it. Yeah. I'm going to film it. I, I might turn it into an AI thing just so yeah. I can watch it back. Right. Um, and you got a robe? Robe. Like what color is it? I'm. I think I know where you're going. I'm. I'm not gonna say it, but tell me. It's an annoying. It's like gold paisley. Like it's wow. like it's like a Versace, a bunch of different like weird. Wow. Looks like a curtain in the in uh, in, in an Encino home. Yeah. And it's mm. your initials on the road. Oh yeah, but they're on the inside, so I can be like, you like this T W, and then the other one says J S for John Stamos. <laughs> Pretty cool. And then I will fake lie and tell whoever I'm with, like you know, this actually used to be John Stamos's robe. Wow. Yeah, talk about a full house. <laughs> and that's when I come, right then and there. Talk about a full house. <laughs> I've, thought, I've thought about it like once or twice. Have you thought about that? No, I, to be honest, this is just a toss talking about. It. It's the first time I've ever thought about it, and it's yeah. horrifying. It is, because it's not going to be great. Like, like the last time you ever do it, and then let's say... Maybe it's for medical reasons. Maybe it's erectile dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Maybe you just are, are you repulse everyone. But what if it was your last time, and then you lived for like twelve more years, and every I, day you had to go? I did my last. That was the last one. I don't think I'd want to know. I'd want to keep trying, and then yeah. slowly defeat and be like, ah, you know, I guess, this, I guess this is how it is. God, that's got to be sad. It's sad. I don't know. My dad is uh, sixty-nine years old. Whoa, real mature. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I wonder if I don't know if he's still doing it. I have no idea. Do we should we call him? I'm going to see him tonight. I could ask. You ask him? I'm going to see him tonight and be like, what's going on? Would you really ask him? Nah, I would discreetly. Yeah. I'd be like, how's your hip? Cool. How's the other thing next to your hip? <laughs> and then I lean in and I'll take the spotlight. We're doing crowd work for this. So we're going to, it's going to be on stage. So yeah. he has to answer. And then the camera's going to pan over to him, spotlight on him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't really feel comfortable talking about it. It's like, well, if you don't feel comfortable talking about it, then you're clearly not having sex. 
Yeah. Because if you're 69, you want to be talking about it. Wait, is your dad single? No, he, he's he's uh, he's married to my uh, mom. Do you think there? This is kind of. I shouldn't. Should I even be asking this stuff? But do you think there's still? I don't know. That's the thing. I have no idea. Oh. I I never walked in on them. I don't know. Yeah. They could have been done 12 years ago. They could have been done this morning. I don't know. Oh, I I unfortunately one time I saw my parents having sex. Daytime, nighttime. It was it was like morning. Oh yeah. I was in my bedroom before soccer practice. Oh, I was in my bedroom asleep and I hear all this grunting and everything and I wake up and I tur- roll over and I say to them, "Will you get the fuck out of my bed?" I did I did not want to see this. I don't want to hear it. And they looked at me my dad, you know, he's almost like a a, a wise soothsayer. He's like, "Son, this is how you were created." Yeah. Don't be ashamed of it, son. It's pretty wholesome if you think about it. I know, but... It's like live birds and the bees. It's not like I had a queen-size bed. I was a kid. It was one of those, like, single beds. They, we were pressed like an ice cream sandwich, and yeah. they're just grinding like fucking... And Dahmer was in there, too. He was like, Dahmer. this is too many people at once. Dude. Wow, that's pretty, yeah. pretty fascinating. And that, and that happened. That's creepy, though. Yeah. I didn't appreciate it. Yeah, that's tough. But, but I never. Uh, uh, I will say I never had to have the traditional the birds and the bees lecture from yeah. my parents. You have to because, see it live. Like I, whenever I said, "Hey, mom and dad," and they just went last October, uh, seven a.m. Uh, the fifth, yeah. and I just go. I replay the tape, and I go, "Got it." Yeah, that answers everything. Uh, do Do you have a philosophy about life? Look, you're you're a successful guy. You you're a guy that's motoring. You're doing comedy specials. You're you're kicking ass in a tough industry. You know the world's tough. Mm-hmm. You know it's a hard place. Mm-hmm. But you 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 spread joy, you spread laughter. Do you have a philosophy that you on life? Uh, in your head and your approach to life, your approach to comedy, your approach to just every day? Do you wake up and is there any saying you have? Is there a philosophy you follow to keep the motor running to keep you going yeah what is it every morning i wake up and i look in the mirror and i just go fuck this again really no but the, i i do think we got to figure out a way to sleep faster i mean the, the, right. you know when it's like you, you, you get back from doing shows it's 1 a.m then you got to be up for something at nine and those eight hours go by so quick yeah. why do we need eight hours why can't i plug into a wall for an hour 45 Right. Like the new iPhones charge at 15 minutes. Yeah. What, what's that version for me? That's not right. cocaine. My uh, philosophy is the humans are outdated. We need a third arm. I need a place to Bluetooth. Ooh. You know, maybe a heat warmer. I like this. I just feel like my philosophy is like we we're an outdated model. We're an iPhone three walking around an iPhone 15 community. So interesting. You know. But yet you're talking about the digital era that moves at the speed of light mm-hmm. versus organic um, material that had to evolve over hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, depending on yeah. where you believe we came from. Yeah, we're losing stuff. We used to have tails. You know? We did? Maybe. I heard it on Joe Rogan once. Wow, what does he know? I don't know. Last name's Rogan? Ro- I mean, Rogan. It helps right? you gain hair, helps you gain knowledge. I'll go with the hair part, but if he thinks we had tails, he can go fuck a Swiss cheese sandwich. On what holiday? I'm going to say Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Arbor Day because I want to see him fuck a sandwich up in a tree. Yeah. I know you do too. Yeah. A Groundhog's Day could be another good one too. There's <sighs> a lot of play on with the, with what's coming out of, out of a hole. You ever get a blow job from a groundhog? It was more of a hand job, but no. Good, smart play. Those teeth. And who who comes to who first? Well, they do. They dig this glory hole in the ground, yeah. right? You're just walking along and it's like, hey, right what's that? An, Boom! You stick it in. It's right next to an Arco. You know, you're <laughs> fueling up your car, and I, I guess I got five minutes. Yeah, and to, to to make matters worse, these fuckers don't even brush their teeth. Their teeth are yellow. Yeah, there's no disrespect. I mean, there's no respect really. <laughs> when was the last time you tried a glory hole? If you don't mind me asking. So I don't it's mind. Per- if it's personal. Dude, look what I asked you. I asked you yeah. about your parents. I asked you about your philosophy. Mm-hmm. I asked you if you ever removed vowels. 
Yeah. Uh, I try to glory hole, and I'll be honest. Normally, I go to the Shell Station at La Brea and Melrose. Mm-hmm. Okay, they were... I don't know if you're going to laugh. That's where I go. Okay, but they were closed. They're doing some reno. Okay. So I go to the Texaco Station over at La Cienega and Olympic. That's a good one. Okay. Stall three. Okay. I go to put you-know-who through the hole. Yeah. Some asshole. Your groundhog. Right. Mm -hmm. Some asshole with a Sharpie. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that book, Where's Waldo? Yeah. So someone drew Waldo around the glory hole, and the glory hole was his mouth. So here's Waldo going. Yeah. And I got to put it in that. Fuck that. I'm waiting until the shell station opens up again. Yeah. What about you? I hate to tell you this, but you're a stall three guy. Yeah. I'm stall two. I was on the other side of that. Dude, I hate to say it, but you might have gopher teeth. I do. I had to get veneers. My, my comedy special dropped, and I immediately got veneers. Because <laughs> I don't want to be recognized with a gopher teeth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just what this industry does to you. Some people get, like, you know, a new jaw. They got new teeth. Have you done it? Have you done any, like, cosmetic surgery? I Would you? Be, I used to be a gopher. No, I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I didn't get anything, no. Would you, though? I, I say no now, but, you know, why, when I'm 45, it, yeah. d- it depends. Am I still fucking? Then maybe. If I'm not, who cares? Yeah. What am I going to look good for? It's just my penis doesn't work? Yeah. But doesn't that's matter. not in your head right now? That's not something you... No. No, I don't think so. I think I look pretty youthful for my age. You do, man. I'm not even going to ask your age. I'm going to say altar boy 15-ish. If you times that by two. Wow. Two altar boys, 30. I don't I think it's evident looking at me. I don't know math. I would think you do. Throw a, an equation at me. 25 divided by 3. 12. Wow. Is there any leftover? Tw- just 12 clean or 12.2? Well, 12, 12 was a, it was a knee jerk. Mm. Can I get another one? Can yeah, you yeah, slow yeah. it down a bit? Okay, I got you. 48. 48. Divided by 4. Divided by 4. Pi. That checks out. You got it. And if I'm a fat guy, lemon meringue pie. Did you just snap at me? I snapped at the camera. Okay, because if you snap at me, I'm going to open my legs and squirt. Is that a party trick? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's pretty cool. I learned it from Raquel Welch in the 70s. Yeah, I, I love watching you uh, perform. It's, it's that bit you do at the Laugh Factory when you squirt in the front row. Is- oh. Something else. Well, I'm the new Gallagher. Yeah. He did watermelons, and I'm just a squirter. You're just doing water, no yeah. melons. Yeah. And people in the front row, the people who know, they bring their own, like, poncho, umbrella, oh. maybe an otter box for Vagicel. their iPhone. Yeah. 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 But when people don't know, and they get hit in that left eye, I mean. <sighs> yeah. And you're yelling your famous catchphrase, which I don't know if you can say it, but if you want, you can say it. Yeah. Here come the fudge. Yeah. It's, and it, it's, it's just brilliant any time. But I do love when you yell at the... Ladies for the legs. That's a good. I, yeah, that's thanks. that's a fun. I don't. I don't know if you've said it on here, so I don't want to ruin the joke. No, no worry. There's no ruining anything. Like th- there's no ruin. And you know what I gotta say? I gotta say about this podcast. Me and you haven't worked a lot together. Mm-hmm. We we've worked maybe three or four times, right? Mm-hmm. Like doing clubs and stuff. Mm-hmm. What I like to. What I was looking forward to today is exciting for me to get to know someone a little better get to know someone new. We mm-hmm. haven't had a lot of time to sit and chat. Yeah. And to do this to me, I was really looking forward to this. Oh, thank you. I was looking forward to doing this too. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's just nice. I, I see you up there. I see you do. I know you're a funny person, but we never, we never really, like, we say hi in the hallway. So this is cordial. Yeah. I'm so happy you're here. And I got to tell you, man, the, the studio you got here in the back of that Twilight Inn is gorgeous. Isn't it great? It's the nice. oldies, they, the oldies yeah. keep it up. Well, they don't make a lot of noise. Yeah, they just shuffle they're, around. They're tapped out by 2 p.m. You do in the morning, you hear a lot of like kind of shit from, from up above. <sighs> but but to 2 p.m., they're napping. Well, there's one guy, uh, John Walters. He's 97 years old. And have you ever seen that superhero, the Silver Surfer? And he rides on like yeah, a wave. Of, this of guy This guy has a diarrhea he does, and he just slides around the whole place. Yeah. Unbelievable. But somehow it gets cleaned up every morning. Oh, the so they're always on top of that. Unbelievable. 
Yeah, good stuff over there. Um, here's we we're talking about phrases. Phrases. Hip phrases. Have you heard of this this creepy guy Orville Redenbacher? Popcorn. Yeah, heard. I think his name in general is a little, you know, what's going on here. Yeah, talk to me about that. Let me see some papers or something. Yeah. Orville. Orville. It it sounds like a destination in Wyoming. You're like, oh, you're heading on down to Orville? All right. We don't go down to Orville. Yeah. Orville Redenbacher. Yeah, see, that's it. Redenbacher does sound, it sounds like a good, like, last name of, like, a running back, maybe. Maybe a tight end. Oh, right. Redenbacher is like a, oh, I got Redenbacher on my fantasy team. Yeah. Orville, I can't get on board with. Yeah, I hear you, bro. Certain names, you know. Redenbacher almost sounds too like it could be some kind of a World War II like biplane or something. Yeah. Or World War One, the, the German Redenbacher. Yeah. But you're right, Orville. Orville and they don't match each other, separate. Yeah. But together it works. Orville Redenbacher. That sounds like something a cop would tell you to spell when you're drunk. I don't think I could do yeah, that. Yeah, right? Orville Redenbacher. I don't think, should we try it? I mean, I'm not good at math, but I can't spell neither. So. Yeah, what's, what's your take on him? O-R-V-I-L-L-E. That's Orville. 3.14159. And then you do Redenbacher, because I'm not even going to try it. R-E-D-E-N. B A C. E, R, asterisk. That asterisk is, right. do not hold me accountable for any of the spelling. Right. Yeah. Nice touch. Just protecting my ass on this. Great touch. Great touch. People say that. Um, do you think, and this is just a, a like a phys- philosophical question. Mm-hmm. Do you think the children of the corn, like the young adolescent females going through puberty, mm-hmm. do you think they would lay in the rows at night and masturbate to... Orville Redenbacher's pitcher being his stature in the corn world? I don't think they would maybe touch themselves, but maybe I think that they would, uh, you know, maybe draw him in the dirt as like a homage. Okay. Maybe, maybe make a little like a, like a shrine somewhere. Must be easy to get excited and then there's these phallic vegetables nearby. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think some people put corn places you wouldn't recommend, like a dishwasher. Your ass? Well, not mine. No, no not yours, but yeah. maybe. Somebody's. Somebody's. Not mine. I mean, you, you ever been to like a, a Ralph's and, and there's a lady just buying one cucumber? Oh, she, what's she, going on? She's not making a salad. There's no Greek salad getting made that night. You think she's having a Shrek fantasy at home? I know. Do me, donkey. Yeah. Donkey, do you, me. You did the voice on that too? No, I wish. People said it was Eddie Murphy, but I thought it was you. No, it was the Murphs. The Mur- but what, what, what do you think when you see somebody buying just a cucumber? And there's nothing wrong with it. I think either they've got a Harry Potter fetish, but mm. they're a vegetarian and they don't want to use, they're like a tree hugger, so they don't yeah. want to use a twig. Could use a Slim Jim, but vegetarian you couldn't. Right, vegetarian. So they go home, they get a nice long cumber, and they just fucking slap it around. Yeah. By the way, and this is another philosophical question. I, 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 I'm sure you have the answer to it. I do. But how does this play out? Okay. A cucumber, okay, mm-hmm. gets on a cucumber dating app. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Matches with a sea cucumber. They go to the beach, sea cucumbers sticking his head out of the water. Land cucumbers right here. One of them's got to die to make love happen. Which one? I think it's a sea cucumber because it's closest to its home. It can be buried at its home. It's like it's almost like a, a homage. You know, it's like this is this is my stop. It's like in a movie when someone's getting off on the subway. Like this is my stop. I'll never see you again. You know, I think it's yeah. like I think it's got to be the sea cucumber. But it's almost like a Romeo and Juliet story yeah. where one of them, to prove their love, one mm-hmm. of them has to say, I'm either going to drown or I'm going to come out of my watery world and be a fish out of water and have oxygen deprivation. Now, I, now I'm now i hearing you. I think, you know, I think it could work because I think the pick, the, sorry, I didn't mean to, the cucumber, cucumbers can be pickles. They're very versatile. Oh, so yes. the fact that so they can yes. so they can substand in, wa- in 
some water. And salt water yeah. can be a preservative. Yeah, so I think the cucumber can get in the ocean and it's okay. Dude, this is why I asked you. You know? You have the answer. I have. That's the only answer I have, but I do. Dude, this was a quandary. This was a, a love quandary. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, you know, synergy. Yeah. Romanticists over the centuries mm-hmm. have pondered this question. Who sacrifices who for love? It's got to be And you, you solved it. It's got to be No one else could have done it. No. You know, that's why I have a Pulitzer Award. I say what now? A, a Pulitzer Award. Pulitzer? Yeah. Silent P. I don't know what it is. I have a Golden Globus. Monkey. <laughs> that was in the corner over there? Um, oh, what? Dude. What's trending on TikTok for you right now? Talk to me. What, what's your you know, go-to? What's bugging you? What do you love? It's, they're turning it all into like a shop. Like It's just people promoting products. So it's it, it feels like the old infomercials that come on at 3 a.m. Oh. When you're just trying to get a glimpse at a Girls Gone Wild commercial. So you're pissed. Pissed. Be, be, well, yeah, because now I'm just trying to scroll, watch funny stuff. Yeah. Maybe a, you know, a 24-year-old lady who happens to... Be blessed in the chest, you know. Blessed in the chest. Blessed in the chest. That should is, be your new saying right that is. there. That is. Blessed in the chest. And maybe she's just talking to the camera. We're having fun. It feels like I'm on a date. It's fun. But, you know, maybe some, some people upload videos from prison. I always think that's pretty cool. Thank you. T-shirt. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. It's, yeah, it's a bunch of, like, shop shit right now. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it feels like, it feels very, like, the, I've, what network that, I forget, the, Hallmark? Who does that? Hallmark. They all, the, they sell shit? Yeah. It's the it's, shopping network. Yeah. Yeah. QVC or whatever. Yes. QVC. You feel like TikTok's become like that. Yeah. They're trying to be like Amazon. Great place to put out a comedy special. Amazon. That's where yours is. Amazon. Yeah. Can you mention it real quick before we go any further? Amazon Prime, Pterodactyl, Trevor Wallace. Go check it out. By the way, folks, Pterodactyl or Pterodacto, as it's often commonly said. Yeah. But the real pronunciation is the way you said it, right? Pterodactyl. But some people say pterodacto, but it's pterodactyl. No, oh. Right. They, they think it's like a SpaghettiOs knockoff. Right. It's, it's like not. a silent tequila, but it's yeah. not It's not pterodactyl. It's, it's, it's pterodactyl. One. Pterodactyl. Why a pterodactyl, your comedy special? Such a unique, unusual, prehistoric, flying reptile bird. For a comedy special. Why? Talk to me, guy. You know, I thought that it was, first of all, if you can't spell pterodactyl, you can't watch it. And if you can't, if you can't watch it, you can't talk shit. So anybody who's not capable of spelling pterodactyl, the people who would talk shit can't watch it. This coming from the guy that couldn't spell Redenbacher? That's also true. I look, I haven't even watched my own special because I don't know how to spell it. I think there's like Does a- anyone know how to spell pterodactyl? Q? Correct. <laughs> P-T-E-R-O-D-A-C-T-Y-L. It's like the word psoriasis. Yeah. Can you spell that? Nobody can. No. Dyslexic? Can anyone spell dyslexic? Maybe. D-X-Y-Z-L-J-S? You mi- yeah, you might be. Uh, but why pterodactyl? Was there, is there a fondness? Were you? Let, let me guess. Let me yeah. try and guess. You were a little boy. You liked dinosaurs. One day, daddy comes home from work. He has a plastic molded pterodactyl bird and gives to little Billy, even though that's not your name. Mm-hmm. For my sake, for my story, mm-hmm. you're little Billy. Yeah. Your father comes home from the car plant. Again, for my sake, your mm-hmm. father works at a fucking car plant, guy. He used to, yeah. Your mother's dabbing her eye because maybe there was some domestic violence the night before. Mm. Daddy comes they in from Ohio, yeah. to try and make up for what might have happened in the bedroom with mommy to make sure little Billy thinks everything's okay. He stopped at the store, brought little Billy a plastic molded pterodactyl toy to take Billy's mind off. Perhaps, and I'm not confirming this, maybe some domestic violence behind closed doors. Is that where you got the name for your special, pterodactyl? You're really good at this. She said. Yeah. It's literally what she said because that was a true story that my mom told me growing up. 
So this was no. One day I had uh, a bowl of uh, spaghettios, and uh, you the ones with the writing, and I knocked it sure. over, and it spelled out pterodactyl, November fourteenth on Amazon. Are you cereal? Yeah. You no, s- it was spaghettios. You spilled a bowl of spaghettios. Alphabet noodles, yeah. And it spelt the word pterodactyl, the exact correct spelling. It was a little off, but they didn't, they didn't have the P out front, but you know, I get the benefit of the doubt because the P is silent. So one letter off. One letter off. That's a smart bowl of fucking smart spaghettios. Bowl. Smart bowl. It was trying to tell me something, but I, I appreciate it. I mean, the, 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 you know, that's one answer, for, but for the conspiracy theorists out there. Okay. Uh, it, it, there's a, a tag and a joke that I, I say about pterodactyl, and then I reference it like two other times as a callback, and it just stuck, and I thought it was a fun name. And What's it, the it's joke? memorable. What's the joke? Oh, uh, it's, it's like a whole. Five, it's a long five it's a, minutes. The, yeah, it's a setup, and then the end is that. This is only an hour podcast. We don't have time for five I'm minutes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, but, well, I've got an hour, not five minutes, guy. Who the hell does he think this guy think he is? Comes in here with a prehistoric bird and think <laughs> he's going to do a five minute bet. God, I, I I have my suit in the car. I was about to go do Fallon tonight. If you want me to do it tonight, are you serious? He's in New York. I got to get on the flight. God, that's why I'm on the highway right now. Yeah, I get the it's like Condor. A hop, hop right on. God. I'm flying their uh, pterodactyl airlines. So what's the real answer for pterodactyl? I find it. I love it. I'm a dinosaur for freak, I, and I, it's such a unique, quirky name. I really do want to know the origin of the, the name. Yeah, it's just about, like, spelling that word and how insane it is. And oh, then, for real? Yeah, correct. Okay. And then I referenced it a few times later as callbacks. And when I was watching the – I didn't know the name of the special until I was in the edit. And I was watching it back, and I was like, that just stuck with me. Huh. And it just like and I and I pitched it to a few people and they're like okay yeah it's got it sticks and it's uh, it's memorable because there's only like four dinosaurs people remember what are they T Rex pterodactyl Velociraptorus Sagittarius well Sagittarius is a star sign but well, who killed the dinosaurs an asteroid was an asteroid a star it's a sign it was an inside job from the Sagittariuses oh, you're a good guy yeah although I would. Toss in their Stegosaurus, Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus. Stegosaurus uh, applied but didn't make the nominations. <laughs> Dilapidon. Oh, you you know all these? Sure. Name the era: Jurassic, Paleozoic, Park, Park, Jurassic Park. Is Jurassic a dinosaur? That's an era. The Jurassic era. Gotcha. But talk to me outside of the word. Yes. Pterodactyl. Yeah. Is there any meaning? Is it when you, the imagery of a pterodactyl, is there anything connected to that or is it clearly just the word? The you, word. I, I think from a side angle, my face might replicate a pterodactyl. Little. You know, what do we think? I don't think so. I think you're, I think you're. This recording? What? That? What? It just it, it says stop and nothing's on. Oh, yeah, we haven't we I don't record my <laughs> podcast. That's what makes it unique and that's why I have the numbers I do. All the other idiots are doing it. But you got to have a hook. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have a hook. So when they click the episode, just black. Yeah. No words. Nothing. That's good. You gotta have a hooky. If you don't stand out, what's the point? Yeah, and do you still do ad reads or no? I do ad reads. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. About fifteen minutes into the dark screen, then it, you pop yeah. up and yeah, they psoriasis. Yeah, they haven't been doing well, but uh, I do them. Okay, so I like that pterodactyl. I like weird, unique names. Yeah, I think it sticks, and it's definitely something memorable. It definitely is. I, I guess I just was wondering if there was a deeper, like you had some kind of an attachment or. An association to a pterodactyl. No, I think the cool birds, cool they prehistoric are. birds. Yeah, you know, they're sharp. They look like they could fish very well from the sky. Yeah. And there were so many variations of them. Yeah, there it's like a so Swiss Army knife with wings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's amazing to me though with dinosaurs is think of all the dinosaurs. You go to the museum. Mm-hmm. You see all the variations on dinosaurs: the the giant lizards, the the flying ones, the fish. And those are just the ones they found. Yeah. So how many tens of thousands or hundreds or millions that didn't get fossilized 
or are fossilized and have never been unearthed? What if the they say the T Rex was the biggest and the meanest, but somewhere in the sediment? What if the T Rex was like the pigeon of the dinosaurs? Right? There's billions of them. Right? What 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 aren't they gonna find that, that's existed on this planet that we share? Well, they still find a lot of fish in the, the deep, deep sea that they're like brand new species. He's always got like a light bulb going on in Yeah. There. Why don't we have light bulbs? Rudolph does. I know. Jealous. Stupid deer Lots though. Of red nose reindeer. Yeah, but it's only like a red nose, so it only looks like you're breaking at all times. But he's the only deer that should stand in the middle of the road because all those other idiot deer yeah. stand in the middle of the road. Like you've heard the saying, deer in a headlight. Yeah. And they just stand there and get hit. They don't hit. know to do with the exposure. But if a car's coming and sees a red light, it stops. Oh, there's a deer and goes. Yeah. So probably the smartest of all the deers, and Rudolph. And he's, he's used to the light. Yeah. He's used to seeing it. So yeah. he knows how to uh, adapt. Yeah. Other deers don't. They you, stare at you, and they're like, is that Rudolph coming over? No, it's a Ford F-350. Good night. As far as I'm concerned, deers can go jump through the front plate glass window of a local Burger King. Fuck them. I don't mean to sound mean, but I mean that. I yeah. feel that. Yeah, that's actually what's in the Whopper is all deer meat. Fucking right it is, guy. I bit into my Burger King Whopper the other day. Ow! I fucking bit into a piece of antler. antler. Yeah. Yeah, they're not doing a good job cleaning out the antlers. <laughs> fucking creeps speaking of creeps we're almost done here but this is going really good so mm-hmm. i'm keeping you for normally i just do an hour but today we're doing four hours <laughs> oh great um speaking of creepy yeah. i know you're out there on the dating scene okay. i know you're not always over at the shell station installed too yeah, yeah yeah what's something about a, a girly girl female that creeps you out what's something going on oh. these days currently that just Sort of, you know, creeps, creeps you out. Me out. And not necessarily a girl that you want on a date with, but is there a common thread that maybe girls out there these days are, are a little creeped out about, a little off? Is there something? What do they creep me out about? You know, I think um, when they ask a lot of questions about when I was born. Really? You know, when, where, what time. Really? You know, 902, what city? Okay, cool. Naperville, Illinois. Okay, now we're doing all, we're doing math. Yeah. And they're adding up stars and charts. I've had girls look at my palm and, you know, do readings on that. And I go, I, is this, was this good? Right. And, you know, it creeps me out because I feel, I feel violated. You do. You read me. I can't read you. It's, you mean, because they're more perceptive than men? I believe so. And you find that very invasive. I feel invasive because I can't read it back. She you knows can. everything about me. She's looking at my palm. She's tracking shit. She's bringing out like a, a magnifying really? glass. And I'm like, oh, what's going on here? But I can't do it back to her. I look at her palm and I go, that, that looks like a palm to me. You're not perceptive like that. No. I don't think a lot of men are. Does that bother you? No. Do you think women have an advantage? Are you saying women are probably more perceptive in reading Men than men reading women? Yeah, I'd say so. I definitely would. Yeah, they, 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 they see everything. I don't think their reading is always accurate. Sorry. Did you just puke? No, I think I just had a gag reflex from my ex. She's like, are you fucking talking about me? They know. <sighs> She's controlling. Wow. She probably gave me the asthma when I was a child. Wow, dude. She yeah. was controlling my breathing back then. She just fucking dinged you. Yeah. Because you got too talky. You got too chatty. Either that or is the person you killed with the gingerbread cookie is coming back to haunt me now. <laughs> I got hit in the throat. You're getting a residge. Yeah. You're getting a residge. Coming ginge. around. Yeah, ginger's in. Yeah, that recoil. Dude. Um, here's the one that's flaking me out, bro, Safiash. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Tell me if this flakes you out. <laughs> Please. Yeah, let me know. You meet a girl, right? You start talking. You get her phone number. Mm-hmm. You start texting, right? Mm-hmm. You're flirting, you're texting, you're starting to date. And then all of a sudden, she starts communicating with you on your Instagram. Yeah. She's got your phone number. Yeah. Something that only special people have, but she's decided to not use that and text with you on a social platform where everyone can talk to me. Not intimate, not private, not special. But she's elected to go to that platform mm-hmm. to communicate. Mm-hmm. I find that really fucking weird. And you prefer the texting? 
Well, it's just more personal because yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. that's a private number. Yeah, okay. I it's see. not out there to be hacked. You know, who knows who can see yeah, what at yeah, Instagram, yeah. but th- like when a girl gives me her number, oh, I, I find yeah. that to be very personal and intimate whereas Instagram or any other social platform yeah. That's for the whole planet to access you. I, I could text Jennifer Aniston right now. Not that she'd text me back, but I could DM her. Yeah, and you're um, lost amongst the masses. Right. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm having, starting to have an intimate relationship with a girl or I want to show a girl I like her or she likes me, why would you jump to a... Mm, that is true. That's a bit creepy to me. Well, there's multiple layers to it. She'll do that, and then she'll add you on Snapchat. She's sending you photos on Snapchat, Instagram, and then texting. It, it's... It's, you know, it's really just submerging you and all of her. But you should be happy that she's doing that. She's keeping it both to both things, you know? I, just, I don't know. I find it I find it very creepy that someone, like, why aren't you just texting me on my phone? It is interesting. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's weird or am I just, like, overreacting? No, I, I think it's, uh, I, I, I think good and bad. I think it's great because if you... Don't get a response on Instagram. You go, maybe maybe it got flooded. Maybe I can text her and see if she responds, or vice versa. Right. Then get a text back. Let me try Instagram. Oh, you know, or or, or she posted a story, and you can comment on it. Like, haha, so hot, cool asparagus. I love asparagus. When are we going on a date? Yeah. You know, there's multiple angles. Okay. So the, it's it's kind of like uh, because it's the same way that we get mail at our house and we get email. Yeah. You know, you have my address, but you also have my email address. Right, but one's sort of archaic, one's modern. Like I don't know, yeah. it just it, so that that doesn't seem to bother no, you it, as it, much. I I I just think I'm in that generation that would do that yeah, shit. I've yeah. I've full blown had conversations with somebody on Instagram and then texting at the same time. Okay, they'll send me a video that they find funny on Instagram and then I'll respond to that, but then I'll respond back to the text. Right, I, I feel like a single mother of two families. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm bouncing back and yeah, forth, yeah. back and forth. But I get it. Yeah, the stuff like if someone sends a funny video or it's more of a communal thing. Yeah. Of course, Instagram. Mm -hmm. But when it's, hey, do you want to meet tomorrow and go for a movie and let's have dinner at, like, shouldn't that be on your phone number, your text? Yeah, yeah. But when someone starts communicating you, communicating with you, I find it creepy. Yeah, I, I think this person who you're reaching out to or is reaching out to you is on the run. Well, it's you. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Right yeah, back, gang. yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I no. I. I. It's just. It's honestly the times we're in. It's. It yeah. doesn't make sense, but it makes all the sense. Maybe tomorrow's the last time I ever have sex. Is it? Well, after talking to you about this, let's do one more quote here. Yeah. Then we're going to do our final quick segment. Beautiful. This has been great getting to know yeah, you Yeah, thanks. Do you want to go to Dairy Queen later? Which one? The one on 3rd in La Cienica? The one in Cleveland. I'd like to <laughs> do a nice road trip with you and get yeah. to know you more. Get the blizzard? Hold oh. it upside down? Yeah, an upside down blizzard. That's what they call me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for your last quote? Please. This one's a tough one, but it's real. Here we go. Yeah, I ate people. I ate them good, and then I buried them in the crawl space. I don't blame myself. I blame Satan. First, Lucifer ate my soul, then taught me how to eat pedestrians, even the fat ones, even the ones with no legs. It's pretty easy. Who? This is Buttersworth. No, dude. It's a guy this time. It's not your childhood best friend, is it? No. It's not JD? It, you would think it would be him, but you're, you're going to be blown away when you find out who. That's a direct quote. Hmm. Mark Zuckerberg? No, nope, singer. It's a singer. No, Michael Buble. What's the sound you get when you slam a door real hard? Wham. George Michael. You got it. That's George Michael? It's George Michael. I love him. Rest he loves peace. you. He, he's great. He's a great singer. What a great eater. That was him? Yeah, that was him. Yeah, I eat, ate people. I ate them good, and then I buried them in the crawl space. I don't blame myself. I blame Satan. First, Lucifer ate my soul, then taught me how to eat pedestrians, even the fat ones, even the ones with no legs. George Michael, 1996. Wow, good year for wine. Not a great year for quotes. Yeah. Jeez. What? 
Time, wow. Time for words from a wooden shoe, our last segment. This is an official Dutch clog. Oh, wow. Inside. Can you travel with those in the airport? Yeah. Okay, cool. As long as you take the metal out. Yeah. That's uh, a problem they started well, doing. So they I had started metal this please. steel toe, the work, the construction so ones, the so construction annoying. clogs. Yeah. Uh, this is called Words from a Wooden Shoe. It's our last segment. Mm. I don't even want this to end because I'm having fun, but we got it. Yeah. We got to end it. So I pull from the shoe. You pull a word out and see if it sparks a memory or a story or oh, something great. from your life, something random, and uh, see, see uh, if you got something for you us. You cut yourself. Oh, here we go. Yeah. This one, This the last time I fainted. Oh, wow. Last time I fainted. Um, so I was opening a can of espresso, pre-blended. Wow. And one, I, forget what it, the, I forget what it's called. Lily, maybe is the company? It's silver? Lily, L-Y-L-Y. L -Y. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you know them? L-I-L-Y. Don't buy it from them. They got a sharp lid. So Whoa. I was in the kitchen with a friend and uh, my girlfriend of the time, and we're talking, and I we're about to go to dinner. I go, let me make an espresso real quick. And I open the lid, and it goes straight into my finger. Hits bone. Oh. Hits bone. And we're talking, and maybe 10 <sighs> seconds later, I go, guys, I'm getting really warm. I think I might. Gone. Yeah. And I woke up on the floor, and I'm looking around like, how long was I out? They're like, 20 seconds. I was like, what? We still had time to make our dinner reservation, which was funny. And we sat at the table, and he was like, how you doing? I was like, I just fainted. Was that your first time fainting? I think so. Because I'm a fainter. Yeah. I fainted many times. I freak out when I see my own blood, exactly what you did. Yeah. Let me ask you this, and maybe you don't remember, but it happens to me every time. When I faint, instantly go into deep dream state. The oh, really? second I go out, like deep, deep dream, like instantly. Did yeah. you remember that at all, or did you just go into blackness? No, it, it faded to black, and then it was like every movie where they're opening your eyes, and you're slowly opening it, and yeah. you just see your two friends above you, and you're like, what, what, what happened? How long was I out for? Yeah. Did I faint? Yes, yeah. a lot of questions. Too yeah. many questions, if I'm, if I'm being frank. Isn't it weird when it comes over you? You kind of know it's coming. You're like, I don't feel so. Yeah. And then it's like when they put you it out put for you surgery. You yeah. Just... yeah, that that's kind of fun. When they start counting down. Right. Like 10, 9. They never get yeah. past 7. Yeah. 10, 9. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of peaceful when you faint, though, right? It's just this instant blackout and yeah. you're, you're gone. It's kind of warm. Yeah. And then you wake up. I So I, I had to get a colonoscopy. Hey, I have a bad colon. So, really, I've had to go under twice for a colonoscopy. What? Yeah, at the ripe age of thirty, they got GoPros in my ass, and every time they <sighs> they put you under to do that, and the first time it was like that feeling. I was like, "Whoa, what's gonna happen?" Yeah. The second time, I was looking forward to. It. I was like, "Fuck it, put me up!" And then as they're injecting it, I remember saying out loud, "Be right back." I was like, "Be right back," and then I just gone. Yeah, kind of a cool last thing to yeah. say before a guy puts a camera in your ass. Yeah, be right back. What kind of camera was it? I think it was a Sony. Oh, those are good. Yeah. Yeah. Did it yeah. have polyp scan on it? I don't know. It, it had a couple. It had a good lens. Fish eye, though. <sighs> yeah. And now we're here. I think I'm going to faint. Mm, I have the camera ready. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Got the new iPhone 15. Jam it right up those cheeks. Oh, wow. Respectfully. Carol, Carol Channing's delight. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor. Tell the folks where they can see you. Tell them more about your comedy special. Tell them about your Instagram so they can. All that. So they can text me and message me. Trevor Wallace on everything. Yeah. Check out my special, Pterodactyl, on Amazon Prime Video. Yeah. Look at your remote. You got a Prime Prime Video button? Hit it. Yeah. Watch it. When did the, the, the Pterodactyl special come out? Uh, a month ago. So it's fresh. It's hot. It's fresh. It's hot. It was charting. It was. It was in the top ten. Oh, that's amazing! So we're people Congrats. are liking it. We're getting good feedback. Good. And I didn't faint. So maybe yeah, the next yeah. one I will. Folks, go and see it. Go and watch Pterodactyl, please. please. Yeah, check and, it out. And uh, tell them where they can find out where you're doing your stand up comedy. Ooh, Trevor Wallace Comedy dot com. Trevor Wallace dot com. Too expensive. Trevor Wallace Comedy. We got it. You got it, and that's got your whole schedule. And you're, are you all schedule, over the country? And schedule this summer, I will be. Yeah, it's and got the you, schedule, the podcast, and all that. Great. And do you do anything overseas, or is it all states? I just did overseas for the first time. It went to Australia. Fun people over there. Yeah, went to Australia. Kind of looks like your backdrop a little bit. Um, well, it's not. It's not 
push it. Hey, those are, sorry, oh. I, I didn't mean to oh. leave on such a. It's okay. On a, on, a, on a mean note like that. All right, I'm sending Mrs. Butterworth over to your house. To <laughs> with Jeffrey? Yeah, with Jeffrey. The ghost of Jeffrey and the gingerbread cookie girl. <laughs> Trevorallscomedy.com. A lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of fun stuff. Got a podcast. Yeah. I sketches every week on my YouTube. Check them out. And you do really good. You're really good with crowd work. You're really oh, yeah. funny with the crowd work. Thank um, you. Thank you. And uh, like I said, we've worked a few times at the local club. So it was really fun getting to spend time with you and having some laughs. Yeah, it was buddy. a lot of thank fun. You. And thank I'll see you, you at uh, the, the stall. Shell, uh, you know, stall Shell two. station. Yeah. Shell station. Yeah. You're two. Where's three. Waldo? Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, folks, Trevor Wallace, check him out, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. F- let's hit the theme music. Uh, folks, you've been riding down the Holland Highway with Trevor Wallace. And what's the coyote thing? Kiss my ass, Wiley Coyote. Beep, beep. Till next time, chicken chow mein, baby.